My name is Sherry Forsyth and I'm a peak performance coach and this is the third video on emotional resilience. As we learned in the last one, um, it is possible to learn how to be resilient. <clears throat> and so today what I'm going to be speaking about is what kind of tools are in your toolbox? What are the kind of things you need to learn how to do? We know now what emotional resilience is, is that we are able to thrive after a trauma. So it doesn't mean that you don't feel those emotions. Of course you do. But it just means that you are able to deal with them in a, in a much better way. So these are some of the tools that one needs to put into your emotional resilience toolbox. Now, in doing the research, there are so many tools. In fact, it was quite overwhelming. So I've chosen the top few that I think are really relevant and also very easy for you to be able to do. Also, there are lots of TED Talks on emotional resilience. And at the end of this video, I'll be um, naming a few TED Talks that you can go and have a listen to. So let's have a look at what tools do you need to put into your toolbox to help you become more resilient. So the first one is to make every day meaningful. Okay, give every day, do something that makes you feel a sense of accomplishment or that you've, you've achieved something in a day. Maybe you set goals or even little mini goals. Um, to help you when you get to the end of the day know that actually you've achieved something that helps you hugely You can pat yourself on the back and uh, that that sense of of purpose and Achievement is very good for our souls uh, The second uh, tool in the toolbox is to be able to learn from your experience So think back on how you've coped with hardships in the past I'm sure there have been some and how did you do it? What helped you? Did it help you to go for a run? Did it help you to have a little candlelit bath? Did it help you to talk about it or not? So think back on how you have dealt with previous hardships and that will give you a few tips as to how to deal with the current one. Okay, the next one is something that we all tend to overlook and that's self-care. So we're talking here about physical, mental, emotional well-being. Take care of your body. Get the sleep you need. Get the rest you need. Do the exercise. Um, uh, look at yourself emotionally. Who are you? Do you know what your needs are? Um, uh, so we, you all know all about that. I'm not going to go into that in a lot of detail. Okay, the next tip is to be proactive. Okay, so don't ignore the problems. Pretend they're just going to go away. The minute we suppress and ignore, that emotion gets stored in our body and every single cell of our body and somehow it will come out later on. So don't ignore and suppress your problems. Rather, have a plan. Put a plan in place and then follow that. Being proactive is very energizing. So let's use that one. Uh, the next one is to develop what you call the right attitude, but essentially it's um, being able to develop positivity and optimism. Um, there is a ratio that I find very helpful if you are trying to be more positive in the way you're approaching life. And that, that the positivity ratio is that for every one negative thought that you have, you need to counteract that with three positive thoughts. And they don't have to be related. So, for example, if I'm thinking, oh, I'm useless in my job, I don't have to find three positive things to find uh, about my job. I can just think of three positive things in my life. I hope that makes sense to you. Right, the next tool we need is to become very emotionally aware. To know how we cope with hardship, how we feel. Are we introverts, extroverts? Um, we need to make sure that we don't get overwhelmed. Uh, when we are suffering from a hardship, do we get paralyzed? Or are we calm and confident and able to cope with things? So emotional self-awareness is very important. <clears throat> okay, the next one is uh, to remain hopeful. For me, hope is a really huge um emotion to have actually in any in any trauma that you are experiencing so if you are able to feel hope that there will be a hopeful resolution or you can feel hope because there is that saying 
this too shall pass. But it's really important to make sure that you are able to remain hopeful as opposed to just being optimistic. Okay. The next thing, <clears throat> pardon me, which is important is to make sure we keep our socializing uh, going. We need our friends. We need our family. Uh, we need to talk to people. So any kind of social support, whether it's um, more uh, informal, as I've mentioned, or whether it's something more formal, a support group or a church group, uh, where you know that you're going to be able to get support for the hardship that you are suffering. Okay, um, a very important one is to be able to maintain your sense of humor. Uh, it does sound quite bizarre in that usually when you are suffering from a hardship, life is very serious. But if you can um, harness your sense of humor and be able to find something funny in your day, some people even advocate that you should, in a hard time, difficult time, what you should do is actually go and watch some humorous TV, okay? some humorous show that you enjoy. That just does so much good for our body uh, and as well as our mind. The next one is very close to my heart, having been a sports teacher. Um, exercise is really valuable for when you are wanting to, wanting to maintain your resilience. It helps our bodies and it helps our minds. And I certainly, as I think I've mentioned a few times, if I wasn't able to go out and walk and run during the time when my life was really battering, battering me around, I don't know that I would have coped so well. Okay, so exercise of any form. And I think an important thing is you must, if you're wanting to exercise, you know, don't go out and kill yourself in the first, in the first time you do it. Choose firstly something you love. And secondly, start very, very gently. So even if it is just five minutes, start with five minutes. And whenever you want to build up, just add 10%. So in other words, 10% of your distance or 10% of your time. Very, very simple to, uh, to do that. Uh, we're nearing the end of the tips that I'm going to give you. Um, <clears throat> the next one is to get in touch with your spiritual side. Uh, lots of people find that their faith, um, being able to see a bigger picture, being able to see it maybe from a different perspective, really does help them. Um, so, yeah, get in touch with your spirituality. The next one is something that you guys might not know about. It's, it's, it's called an internal or external locus of control. And what we're trying to do when we're being resilient is we are developing an internal locus of control. In other words, I am in charge of my life myself. Okay. As opposed to if you've got an external locus of control, when you believe that in fact all those uh, situations outside of you control your life, which is a very disempowering way to live. So go to have a, a look at an internal locus of control. In other words, I'm going to take responsibility and accountability for myself. In this trauma, what can I do? Okay, um, then the last one that I think is so incredibly relevant is don't give up. If you think it's worth fighting for, don't ever, ever, ever give up. Keep going. I mean, there are lots of stories about people who were, um, who tried and tried and uh, Thomas Edison, uh, he apparently um, had like 1000 different patents before one worked. So he never gave up. He kept trying to get there. So that whole idea of perseverance, which means not giving up, for me is a very, very important one. Okay, so as promised, at the end of this, I said I would give you some TED Talks to have a look at. Um, if you have a look at uh, a TEDx talk uh, in Rush, uh, Dr. Greg Steinberg, he shows how to use adversity actually to build yourself. So that's uh, Dr. Greg, Greg Steinberg uh, at the TEDx talk in Rush. The next one is uh, uh, from Sam Goldstein. He talks just about the power of being resilient. Another TED talk is Charles Hurt from Charlotte. Um, and he talks about how it can be learned. So it'll probably be quite a relevant one for you guys to listen to because that's what I've been chatting about today. And then lastly, Angela, Angela Lee Duckworth talks about perseverance or not being able, not giving up. 
So I hope that there's, those are a few tools that will help you. There are many, many more um, that you can research yourself. But those are, are kind of the main ones that you'll be able to start on anyway. So I hope that if you are wanting to build some resilience, this will have helped you. Uh, I invite you to join my uh, live Facebook the video next week where I'm going to be talking about a thing called radical resilience. What is that? Tune in next time. Uh, but until then, and as always, I thank you so much for joining me on this Facebook Live. I really value your time. And if you have any comments that you'd like to make or information you'd like to share, as always, please feel free to do so in the comment box below.